Alrighty, hello everyone. I am going to do a special stream um, tonight. I am going to show you how to build a beginner's guide to building a Commander Legend deck. So that is what we are doing tonight. Um, I have several packs out here. Um, I also need to do a pack opening for my good buddy Alex the Gamer um, as well. But I have several packs here that I'm going to build a Commander deck with. Now, there's a piece of paper when you get uh, Commander Legend packs or you buy a Commander Legend box, um, or should I say if you buy like a box with three packs or you buy like a whole booster box. Um, it comes with a little piece of paper in there that tells you how to do the Commander uh, draft command the draft for commander legends um, which is you know when you buy a draft booster box uh, the deck that it tells you to build is a 60 card deck and it explains to you that you need about 25 land um, and then you know the rest creatures um, give or take 60 cards depending on how you build it uh, draft arch types it's got multiple colors for the backside that explains that but what we're actually building today is we're gonna build a actual 100 card commander deck and i'm going to show you the packs that i'm using uh for those of you who are familiar with uh magic the gathering arena as well as uh watch me play magic the gathering arena or have played tournaments or have done tournaments that i have hosted for magic the gathering arena you're familiar with the packs that are available in magic the gathering arena you can also buy them on tabletop so with the exception of commander legends is not in magic the gathering arena but we, we're going to do the Commander Legend pack um, simply because the Commander Legend pack um, has legendary cards and there'll be a couple cards in here that we might be able to use as a commander. We may or may not use those a couple times. I've done this before uh, with the wife when we played Commander or Tabletop. Um, I can't remember if we built 60 cards or 100 cards. Do you remember? Was it 60 cards or 100 last time we built them? and played each other. But anyway, the Commander Legend pack, um, that's an extra pack that I'm using. Uh, essentially, I have everything except for Keldeen right now. Um, I need to get a booster box of Keldeen when I get a chance. But we have Zendikar Rising, and actually I'm gonna do them the opposite direction. Zendikar Rising, 
uh, is one of the booster packs that we have. Theros Beyond Death, Ikora, Lair of Bohemus, Core 2021, War of the Spark, Core 2020, Throne of Eldraine, Core 2019, Ravnica, Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, and then we also have this Commander Legend Pack that we will be using for All right, is it okay now? That's the question. Is it okay now? All right, is it okay now? Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. I had to unplug it and plug it back in. Thank you, Christmas, for letting me know. I really appreciate that, bro. All right, so what I was saying is I am going to show how to build a commander deck for beginners, uh, basic from scratch. Can you kick that phone off, please? Pass me that again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it down and set it over here. Okay. Set it for 73 and... All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a basic commander build. Um, if you buy a pack if you buy packs they have a three pack box that you can get or you can buy a whole box of booster packs and they come with a little sheet like this that shows you command the draft is for drafting if you're drafting just with commander legends and it describes how to build a 60 card deck it also has the color combinations and draft arch types um, on the back of the little piece of paper if you buy like a three pack of these commander legends um, Or if you buy a booster box, they have this paper inside there But what we're actually gonna do is we're actually gonna build a hundred card commander deck And we're gonna show what you would need essentially to build a hundred card commander deck as a beginner um, If you have played magic the gathering arena, you're familiar with these sets of magic the gathering they have them in tabletop, of course, and essentially I have core 20, 
19, Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, Zendikar Rising, Theros Beyond Death, Ikora, Lara Bohemus, Core 2021, War of the Spark, Core 2020, and Throne of Eldraine. I don't have any Chaldean right now. I need to order a Chaldean booster box. I'm uh, probably going to be doing that at the end of the month, next month. I don't know. Sometime soon, hopefully. Uh, but essentially, what I'm going to do, and I've done a couple streams before where me and Freki have played uh, Commander against each other. We took Legends packs and other packs and built a Commander deck. But what I'm going to do is actually build a 100 card deck out of these. Pending, there's enough cards in here to do it. There should be. But it also depends on the color combination. If you bought these packs, they're like $399, $499, give or take. So between $40... $40, seven, three, 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 between 40 to $50 is what it will take to get you started with a hundred card commander deck with extra card left over. If you were brand new to the game of Magic the Gathering and you wanted to build a hundred card commander deck. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to playing certain archetypes within Magic as far as Magic the Gathering. Uh, Commander is a lot of fun to play and it's a very casual format. You can get together right now and you can't because of COVID, but when you can get together with your friends or you, you're able to do it online with a camera setup where you have, you know, a setup over overlay of your layout, you can play Commander with essentially $50 worth of cards. You can build a Commander deck plus lands. I have a land box next to me. Um, but most of the time you can either get lands from a store or, you know, somebody who's played Magic the Gathering as long as I have, they'll just give you a bunch of lands if you need them. Um, a lot of people that play Commander also will loan you a Commander deck to play to try it. And typically Commander is a very social thing and a very casual thing. Six people play against each other and whoever wins out of the six people is the winner of the match there's a hundred cards that you need for the deck and that's essentially what we're going to build you can go anywhere from 33 to 42 land depending on what type of deck you build uh typically i use about 46 land give or take in a commander deck depending on how mana heavy the deck is so that is essentially what we are going to do today um, I also need to open a couple booster packs for Alex the Gamer for his subs. We are doing a promotion. We were doing it in February, also doing it now in March. If you sub or gift sub anytime within the month of March, I will open a booster pack of cards. You have the opportunity to guess the rare or mythic, the person who subs or gift subs. And if they guess the rare or mythic in that pack of cards, I will send them that rare or mythic. But I don't know if Alex the Gamer is in the room yet. Did you tweet something? Raging, Raging Hulk said he saw it and he's worried about us being okay. okay.
Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, no issues. I was just messaging you on messaging you on Twitter. All right. So we need to do a couple pack openings for Alex the Gamer for a sub and gift sub that he did earlier. Um, I was streaming a little bit earlier today, Magic the Gathering Arena. So we're gonna go ahead and do that pack opening. Which pack of cards would you like? Not Legends. But any of these that you would like, Throne of Eldraine, Core 2020, uh, War of the Spark, Core 2021, Icoralera, Bohemus, Theros, Beyond Death, Zendikar, Rising, Ravnica, Allegiance, Guilds of Ravnica, or Core Set 2019. Can you tell me which one you want? I got boxes over here. Uh, more than what is laying right here. I got, I got boxes and boxes of cards so you know whichever one you want just let me know which two and what rare and we'll try to see if we can get those for you again um i was doing a promotion in february for anybody who subs and gifts subs and i am continuing the promotion for march uh anybody who subs and gifts subs gets to pick one of these packs not necessarily one of these packs because i'm opening these packs but one of any of the packs within these sets and i will open a pack they get to guess the rare or mythic within the pack and if they guess the rare or mythic correctly then i will mail that person the rare or mythic out of the pack uh alex the gamer gave a gift sub earlier for my stream today as well as subbed to my channel so i'm opening two packs for him today right now Right, exactly. It's like Christmas. Every time you get to open a pack, it's like Christmas. And then I have a whole bunch of cards that I have to sort. It's like Christmas and card sorting for days and days and weeks and months and years. And I'll probably, I'll probably do some card sorting streams. Um, you'll probably like some of the card sorting streams that I do because they're kind of crazy. Um, I have to lay out a whole bunch of cards and actually get a bigger table. I kind of narrowed it down because I'm doing the deck build today to show people how to build a commander deck and what they need. This essentially is $40 worth of cards, give or take, uh, maybe $50, give or take, depending on where you buy it from. Uh, if you get it, you know, individual packs from a card shop or whatever, it's probably about 40 including the commander legend pack seven three 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 so 10 20 30 3 plus 7 40 40 cards 42 dollars 40 45 dollars with tax 50 dollars if you get them for like 4.99 give or take and i have a couple more i have more piles so don't just think that this is the only pile there's a whole pile right here for another build um because i'm actually going to build one and then either frecky will build one or i will build one for her and then we will play the two got another one there so this one and this one uh, got a whole, whole handful of cards lots and lots but uh we're going to build one i'm going to build one i'm going to build one for her she's going to build one and then we'll play them against each other to see how they play. I also have 2019 Commander uh, decks. I have two that I've already opened. I have two more that are unopened. And then I have a whole nother box of four Commander Legend decks that I actually bought to try to do giveaways with. If I get, you know, my goal for the end of the month, I might give away um, some Commander decks. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. There's, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and half a box each. So 15 times 10. There's at least 150 packs or more sitting over here off to the, off to the right of me. Yeah. Packs and packs and packs and packs. Yeah. Cause like I have two boxes of 2021 and I, I, wanted to keep one and not open it just to show you i have this one and then i have this one for 2021 as an example 
and there's about half this card doesn't go in there this is a card i found on the floor like when you start finding cards on the floor that are like werewolf double-sided cards from an older set like you have way too many magic cards right yeah yeah frankie agrees but anyway yeah the 2021 i bought two boxes of 2021 because i like the 2021 set so much and i actually wanted some brash taunters and some cool stuff um and i actually was going to keep one and not open it but i went to open the 2020 and accidentally opened the 2021 box by mistake so now i have two boxes of 2021 that are open one of which is like you know three or four packs missing out of it and the other one is like half of the booster box gone but there, there's 36 packs in a booster box um like the Nakar rising as an example you know there's about half of the box missing out of there that i've opened up already um give or take Zendikar rising and theros okay do you want me to open the packs that are on the table or would you like me to pull fresh packs out of the box your choice I'll, i can open these i said i'll open these so these are fine if you'd like we can do that and then i'll pull them pull them or i can even use them in the commander build it doesn't matter whichever it'll probably be easier to open these and then just use them in the commander build as well Car rising and theros beyond death do you know which rares you would like do you know which rares you would like And if you don't, you can always Google Zendikar Rising Visual Spoiler. You can go to like mythicspoiler.com and take a look at the rares that are available for Zendikar Rising as well as the rares for Theros Beyond Death. I have opinions on which ones I like, which ones I want to keep, but I don't want to guide your guess. But there are lots of good rares. Lots of good rares and mythics in both of these two sets. Theros Beyond Death. That's your favorite, right? Theros? Yeah. So Freki's favorite is Theros Beyond Death. Zendikar Rising is a good set. Um, I would not say it is my favorite, but there are a lot of a lot of cards and rares in there that I do like a lot. It's kind of hard to narrow down a favorite for me. You know, if I had to choose a favorite as far as Magic the Gathering sets in the last few sets, you know, I would have to go like old school. And it's funny to say old school and then say Dominaria. Because Dominaria has a lot of old school cards that are actually from like beta and, and you know, around that time, like the elves and stuff. But um, that's mainly why I like Dominaria. But as far as these sets, it's hard to kind of narrow down to just one. Uh, I, I like Ikora Lara Bohemus. I like 2021. I, I love Zendikar Rising. Like War of the Sparks got a lot of good stuff. You know, I like all magic cards. I don't think there's a bad magic card. And if there is, you can just give it to your opponent. Here, take this. Because that's what you do with bad cards. And it's not necessarily a bad card, it's a bad card. Isn't it? But no, there's, um, I don't know. A lot of my decks are mixed and matched with like Zendikar and M21. Take your time. There's no rush. Take your time. We're not in any hurry. We are going to do this Commander Legend build. Or well, actually, Commander build of a regular deck because the Commander Legend draft deck is sixty, but you use only Commander Legends, which is kind of kind of weird to me. But um, an actual Commander deck is across the spectrum of cards, and Commander anything pretty much is legal with the exception of 
um, like Power 9, Dual Lands, things like that. And I really like the fact that they added Jumpstart Lands. And I bought one box of Jumpstart, but I didn't get like a full playset of every single land in Jumpstart. So you know what? I'm going to have to purchase another box of Jumpstart or some more lands, just the lands from Jumpstart. I don't know. I don't know which. I would like to buy another whole box of Jumpstart. You agree? Yeah, because it was a lot of fun. We played. It was a lot of fun. And Freki actually missed it on Magic the Gathering Arena because she was kind of on hiatus from Magic the Gathering Arena because she was playing World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Can you believe that? Yeah. I like World of Warcraft okay. Um, I haven't played World of Warcraft in probably 10 years, but I like the fact that they brought Classic back. Colossus of Arrakos. Colossus of Arrakos. Arrak? Did I pronounce that? Akros. Akros? Wow. Colossus of Akros. Alright, so for the Theros Beyond Death, which is this one. And, and do you know your Zendikar? Are you still going to look for the Zendikar? Or do you have an idea? If you don't, that's fine. Plenty of time. We are going to... And my team's trying to fall off. We are going to open the Theros Beyond Death Pack. We are going to try... Yes. We are going to try for Colossus of Akros from the Theros Beyond Death Pack. For Alex the Gamer, everybody think... Colossus of Akros. Colossus of Akros. All right. We're going to open this pack very, very delicately here. Very, very delicately. All right. So we have Wrap in Flames. That is a common wrap it. Your rapid in flames. We have kind of hard to find the camera. We have glory bearers. We have next born cigar. We have Portent of Betrayal. We have Setsian Training. We have Lempad of Death Vigil. We have Nexus Wardens. We have Temple Thief. We have Revoke Existence. We have Arena Trickster, Dream Stalker Manticore. That is the first uncommon in the pack. We have El Elspeth's Elspeth, ah. however you pronounce that, Elspeth. Elspeth. Right, Elspeth. That's what I said. We have Elspeth Nightmare. We have a Hydra Group. We have Brave Breaker Lamenia. Lamenia? Lamenia? Lamia. Right, what she said. Lamia. Is that like a. Lamia is a snake? That's weird. All right, so we have a full page swamp. These are pretty. These are pretty. And I'm actually going to do this is what I was talking about for the symbol that I want. I'm actually going to do a design with this symbol for my Punisher symbol. And then we have a No Table Required Magic the Gathering Arena Advertisement card. And on the back, it just says the same thing. They didn't give me any codes or anything on there. Wow. Wish I had a code. All right. So... The other pack that we're doing is Zendikar Rising, and we are looking for Maul. 
of the Skyclave. Mall of the Skyclave. All right, so we're going to do Zendikar Rising. Zendikar. And aren't those packs so pretty? Look at the little Jace on there, yeah. All right, so Zendikar Rising Pack. We have a cat token. We have a full page land. Lendy, Lendy. I'm actually going to go this direction because we want to make it dramatic. Pyroclastic Hellion is a common. We have Turn Timber Aesthetic which is another common, because they do this this pack upside down. In case you didn't know, they do the pack upside down. It's kind of hard for me to lean and stay on camera where you can see, like, you know, above my nose. Like, the only thing you see is the scar on my head. All right, Into the Roll. That's a good card. For those of you who play Mill, this is a great card. They use it a lot for Mill to bounce stuff back and then draw a card and mill you. All right, so then we have... Roll Eruption, Royal, Roll, 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 how do you pronounce that, R-O-I-L, right, what she said, and then we have Turn, Tuck, Ribble, Fort, we have, and that's the fun of it, having me mispronounce cards, that's like half the fun right now, so we have Chijuru, Bright, Blade, we have Resolute Strike as another common. We have Tazim Raptor. Don't let that peek out. All right. We have a Blood Beckoning. We have a Hydra Constrictor. We have Paired Tactician, which is the first uncommon out of the pack. We have... Spoils of Adventure. We have Gayeen Vale, which is a two sided card. Land or. And then the rare card is Nahiri Hair of the Ancients, which is a Plains Walker. Plains Walker. So close, but no. I've opened, I think, like 11 or 12 packs between um, February and March, and I've yet to have a winner. If I have a winner, I will have a celebration. We will do cake. We will do ice cream. We will, we will dance the jig, and then I will mail them the rare. And if I reach my sub goal, I will either do gift cards next time around, or I will do commander decks. Not sure which. All right, so we are going to use these packs for the commander. I have opened up a Theroth Beyond Death and a Throne of Eldraine pack. I want to open the commander legend packs, and I actually want to get... Which card do I want, everyone? Does anybody know which card I would like to get out of this pack? Do you know? Do you know which one? A Lotus. That is correct. Gilded Lotus is the card that we are looking for. I would love to have a shiny foil, full page Gilded Lotus of the $400 value. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, I doubt that will happen. But, you know, keep your fingers crossed. Think Gilded Lotus. We will hope and pray for a, it's an Ultra Pro card. Okay, yeah, that, that's not that exciting. All right, so on this side, we have a treasure token. Treasure token. This is for our Commander Legend pack. All right, so they do Commander Legends right side up. So we are going to do, the common is Forceful Denial. We have a Doomed Traveler. We have makeshift munitions. These are a little easier to pronounce because they're all like, you know, really common. 
Grove Tracker, Haunted Cloak, Wild Celebrants. We have a Fire Diamond. Wow. Fire Diamond. And it's common, and I love that. I don't know if you remember. Some of you may. Uh, some of you, it may be way, 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 way before your time. But Fire Diamonds came out in one of my favorite of all time sets, Mirage, which was back in 1994. So Commander Legends has Fire Diamonds in there. Fire Diamonds are pretty cool. It is an artifact. It is a two casting cost artifact. And it comes onto the table, tapped. And then you can tap it for red mana. So it is a extra mana ramp mana source. And that is a beautiful image. That is a beautiful picture for the fire diamond. I like that art. That is awesome for a common. All right, so we have squad captain. We have wild heart invoker. We have elvish doom Sayer. We have azure fleet admiral. We have staunch throne guard. We have vow of torment. That is an uncommon. We have Furnace Celebrant, which is also an uncommon. We have Volcanic Torrent, which is an uncommon. And then we have Rings of Bright Earth. Wow. Rings of Bright Earth is a rare. That's a pretty good rare, too. I like that rare a lot. Look at that. That is pretty. Then we have another uncommon, Rakath. Regrath? Regrath? I don't even know how to pronounce that. How would you put Right, okay. <laughs> Son of Raga. It sounds like a Klingon name. Like, I, I, I can pronounce Klingon stuff, but like, Raga. Son of Raga. Like, that's just, yeah. That's a mouthful and a half. We also have Kangi Sky Warden, which is an uncommon. We have Underlying Rage, which is our foil common card. Foil. And it's, I, I would have loved for this to be a foil, rare, full page, Gilded Lotus, but no such luck. And then we have the Prismatic Piper, which is an extra common common there. But Rings of the Bright Hearth is an actual really good card. Um, I think it was actually one of the cards that was in the Almond Cat. What are they called? Almond Cat. Mastery Almond Cat. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. That's it. Masterpiece collection. Rings of Bright. Bright Earth. $3.46. Wow. The Masterpiece one was a lot. Yeah. So the Masterpiece was $100 for 115 to 125 dollars for the ring for this card for the masterpiece collection and it was actually from kaladesh remastered or kaladesh inventions but this card is three dollars and 62 cents so that's not bad that's not bad i can't complain there but it's a really good card really really good card all right so we are going to go on to our next pack which is ravnica allegiance this is the older set it is from well i say older set it's it's like a couple of years old now shimmer of possibility Storm Strike. Bring to Trial. 
Coral Commando. We have Storming Strength. We have Under Cities Embrace. We have Get the Point. Watchful Giant. Arrow Monculus. Goblin Gathering. High Alert. Biogenetic Upgrade. Spire Mangle. We have Warrant Warden. That is a rare. Azeroth Guild Plate. That's a dual land. It's a common dual land. And then a Spirit Token. Alrighty, so then we have a 2019 pack. 2019 pack. We're gonna throw these packs on the floor like peanuts in a roadhouse. All right, so Fire Elemental, Lexadon Line Breaker, Thrilled Sea Serpent, Infernal Scarring. Good card for comment. Giant Spider. Love that card too. Doomed Dissenter. Dissenter. He descends. Dagger back. Bastilus. Strangling spores. Totally lost. For those of you who are just joining the stream, you may be totally lost if you don't know what's going on. We are building a commander deck. Infernal Hillian. That's an uncommon. Lightning Strike. That's good uncommon. Switcheroo. Exchange control of two target creatures. Remember how I was saying there's no such thing as a bad card in magic, but if there is a bad card in magic, you want to give it to your opponent? You would use a switcheroo to do that. There's also an enchantment that you can do it with as well. The exchanges too. Runic Armasaur is the rare. We have Leech's Cress, which is a foil. Look at that. It is foily. It is a Leech's Cress. And that's caress, like the soap or to hug or... Anyway, so forest, and then we also have a goblin with an ax. You don't want to hug him. We have guilds of Ravnica pack that we are going to open. That's kind of flashy, flashy. So I'm going to slide these over here. So flashy, flashy. Flashy, the flashy. There, there, there. Right there. Put it right there. All right. We have Guilds of Ravnica. It's shiny. It is Guilds. Ravnica. All right. We're going to open this pack. Bye bye, paper. All right. We have Rubble Belt Boar. We have Color the Culprit. We have Pass Wall Adept. I love that card. This card is unblockable. Or should I say it makes other creatures unblockable. Pass Wall Adept is really cool. You can Pass Wall Adept and like put something big out. You play blue green as an example, you Colossify it. And then all of a sudden you Pass Wall Adept, use the ability, bam, and you hit somebody for a full mess load of damage. Wary, Okepi. Ooh, Cappy. Veiled Shade. Siege Worm. Goblin Electromancer. Notation Rain. I don't think I could pronounce these any, any better even if I was doing it with like my Kermit the Frog voice. Hey, we'll Kermit the Frog here. And today we have a... Silencia Lock... Yeah, see, no. Silencia Locket. Chemister's Insight, Golgari Find Broker. We searched all of Sesame Street looking for the Find Broker and we couldn't find the Broker. Crush Contraband. 
For those of you who don't know Contra, it was a game. It was made in 19, I don't know, 19 something. Chromatic Lantern is the rare. We have Pax Faber. We have Boros Guild Gate. And then we have an insect token. You know what you use those with? Either Shoot Swarm or Scoot Swarm. The verdict is still out on which way you pronounce that. But these are little, little, little bugs, little insects. They create a lot of them too. All right. On the floor. All right. So, Org Errant. And by the way, that was Throne of Eldraine. Throne of Eldraine. The Toilet of Magic the Gathering. Throne of Eldraine. If you don't get that joke, you probably won't. But if you do get the joke or you want to get the joke, you can always listen to the song Kingdom Chair by. Who sings Kingdom Chair? Soup Dragons, that is correct. See, she knows her music. All right, so Org Errant. It was a test and you passed. When my wife knows what music I like, that is a good sign. True Love's Kiss. Okay. Wishful Murtha. Blood Haze Wolverine. Bell, the pleasant. Or actually the pheasant. The pheasant? The pheasant? Is that the bird on his shoulder or is that him riding the horse? That's the question. Tempting witch. If you have a tempting witch try to give you an apple, don't eat the apple. You'll fall asleep and you may never wake up. Arden Veil, unless you get True Love's Kiss. Arden Veil Tactician. Jousting Dummy. Out Muscle. Blow your house down. Who blows your house down? The Big Bad Wolf, that's right. And I don't know that there's a Big Bad Wolf card. Hypnotic Sprite, look at that one. That is beauteous. That is beautiful. Look at that. Beauteous. It is gorgeous. Frankie likes all of these artsy, artsy cards. I'm not a big fan of the artsy, artsy cards, but that is beautiful. That is beautiful if you like artsy, artsy card. Akron of Absolution. That's a good card. We have Red Cap Melee. Red Cap. We have an ongoing joke about Red Cap ribs. All right. Oh. <gasps> Wow. You can't see that. You can't have that one. Guess what it is. I'll give you a guess. Throne of Eldraine. It is a rare. It is one of your favorite cards thus far because it creates two little wolfy woofies. Look at it. Boom. Gorgeous, right? Yeah, see, so that automatically becomes hers because, you know, he's going to want that, Garrick. Ooh, yeah, pretty, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I have an island. And then I have an on an adventure explanation card. Welcome to the new world of competitive magic. Twitch.tv slash magic. You can visit Magic the Gathering's Twitch channel slash magic. You can also visit the Ether Hub channel or the Team Ether channel, uh, which is ho hosting me right now. Um, and then the explanation of on an adventure. What happens is when you cast a card with an adventure, it goes kind of exile per se, while it is on an adventure. And then you have the opportunity to cast a card later. You can either cast the card without an adventure, or you can cast the card on an adventure and then cast that creature later. Um, typically there's a sorcery or instant spell attached to cards that have an adventure and they are dual cards. A little bit different format. So we are opening the 2020 pack right now. And I also love these. I love, I love the standard sets. A lot of people go, hey, 
Punisher, why do you like standard sets? The reason why I like standard sets is, for those of you who are familiar with standard sets, you already know, and for those of you who aren't, I'm going to explain it. A standard set has reprints of the previous sets within that standard set that continue on within standard. Right? It's kind of confusing, right? So what happens is, and I want to explain this, why I love, why I love standard sets. For example, you have Ravnica Allegiance, and then you have Guilds of Ravnica, and then you have a 2019 set. 2019 has reprints of cards prior to 2019, which are inclusive of Ravnica Allegiance and Guilds of Ravnica cards that are in the 2019 set. So instead of buying these or whatever sets come prior, you could buy a core set 2019 and it gets the reprints within those cards. Make sense? Yes. All right. So also, if you go to Throne of Eldrain, the 2020, 2020 will have reprints of the cards that are prior to that, so on and so forth. When you go War of the Spar for 2021, it'll have reprints of the cards prior to 2021 in the 2021 set that they continue in standard, and so on and so forth. And then these sets that are after that will be after, and then when 2022 comes out, it'll have reprints of those sets. And that's basically how standard sets work, for those of you who don't know. It keeps cards that are the most commonly used or good in the meta in that core set. Is it always good to buy core sets as opposed to the other ones? Eh, it depends on what kind of card you want. The rares are harder to get in a core set as opposed to the set itself. So if you're wanting a particular rare in a particular set, it might be good to buy the individual rare or buy those packs that are of that set, but it really depends on which way you want to go with it. All right, so we are opening an Ikora layer of the Phoenix pack. And the paper goes on the floor. All right, so Spell Eater Wolverine. We have Helica Glider, Flying Squirrel, Frost Lynx, Fertilid, 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 how do you pronounce it? Fertilid, Fertilid, Whisper Squad, that's a good card. Whisper Squad, searches for more Whisper Squads and you get more Whisper Squads and more Whisper Squads and more Whisper Squads and more Whisper Squads and you get the idea. Light of Hope, I love this card. I use it a lot in a couple different decks, especially the Azurus decks, black and white, if you're not familiar with uh, what Azurus means. Uh, Light of Hope is good with vampires. It's good by itself. It's good with indulging patrician. It's good with Vito, Uncle Vito. Light of Hope, love it. Threaded Sails. This card is a good sideboard card, Shredded Sails. It's very good in the meta. It is a common card. It destroys target artifacts. Shredded Sails also deals four damage to target creature with flying. It also has cycling. You can sideboard it in. If you don't need it, you can cycle it. If you kill an artifact, you can. If you want to kill a creature that flies, you can. Good card. Great sideboard card. Faucet Reader. All good cards, all cards of magic are good cards though, but I'm just, I have to point that one out because it's good. I play uh, green and red and I put that in the sideboard, so. Faucet Reader, draw a card, then discard a card. Good for Drudge, good for Mill, good for a bunch of different things. Sleeper Dart. Memory Leak. And for those of you who don't know, Memory Leak has been around for a while. Target opponent reveals their hand, you choose non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand exile it cycling one then we like a couple different sets of them natural law uh, counter target spell cycling two discard a card draw a card lead the stampede blitz raptor we are in the uncommons and rare emergent ultimatum we got an ultimatum as a rare look at that that's nice i don't know if it'll fit in the commander deck we gotta try to see what we have in the way of legendary i don't think we have anything black green blue so i don't think we can squeeze ultimatum into this commander deck that we're building but we'll have to see we had a forest and when we have a human soldier the next pack that we are opening is war of the spark for this commander build war of the spark 
on the war as well. We have it, Tefiri's Time Twist. Now, for those of you don't, who don't know, the first card that I ever used to win tournaments was a card called Tefiri's Veil. Now, what happened way back when, before 7th edition rules and Tefiri's Veil, was I could cast a Ball Lightning, and then I could Tefiri's Veil it, and then the Ball Lightning would come back, and then I could make the Ball Lightning disappear, and I could attack with my Ball Lightnings, and if I made them bigger, I could attack with my Ball Lightnings every single turn on the opponent. They have changed the rules on the way that phasing occurs, but Tefiri's Veil and Tefiri's Time Twist are pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's a pretty neat card, and I love it a lot, and it's a common. Grim Initiate, Murder for the Cause, Contagious Plan, Vivian's Grizzly, Spark Reaper, Courage in Crisis, Shriek Daiba, Divine Arrow, that's a good card. Thundering Karatok. Cruel Celebrant. If you're playing white and black, if you're playing Azeroth, which is white and black, and you play clerics or vampires, clerics and vampires, Cruel Celebrant is a really good card to use for a black-white deck um, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It's a very good uncommon. It's very playable for that that type of deck. Bolt Bend and Kaya, Bane of the Dead. Now, she is also Ezra, black and white. Your opponent and permanents your opponent controlled with Hexproof can be targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have the Hexproof. Exile target creature. So in any time that they make something Hexproof, she unhexproof stuff. Good card. I would say better so in sideboard than main, but it depends on what deck you're building. Red Horde Butcher. It is black, it is red, it's hasty, hasty. Comes out and you can attack with it immediately. And it is a zombie warrior. And then a wizard token. All right, so the last pack that we are opening to try to make a hundred card commander build. And we may actually have to open more packs. I may be incorrect in how many packs I need to make 100 card, because I think the last time me and Frecky made 60 card ones, but we'll see what happens. Core 2021. We're gonna try to open this one up and see what we have inside. Core 2021. We have a Sabreling token. We have a forest. They are upside down for 2021. So we have Liliana, Waker of the Dead. That is a very good, very good Planeswalker. If you are playing mono black especially, or you can mix and match a couple different colors, she's still a good card. Sanctum of the Calm Water. And she returns stuff. So if you're playing Drudge, especially, like say for example, Frecky plays a black green Drudge, she's good for that. Just so you know. Um, Because she puts cards onto the battlefield as her special ability. Sanctum of the Calm Waters is an uncommon. Chrome Replicator. That's a good card too. Lorakel Colt. It is a snake. It is pretty. It is blue and green. I like that. I like that card. Those are really good cards in that pack. Bracket down. One of the reasons why I like 2021 so good so much is because it's got a lot of good cards. Blood glutton. Thrill of possibility. Sack a creature. Oh no, discard a card. Discard a card, draw two. My mistake. There's another one. Sack and. Secure the scene, different part of it. Rentic Inventory, Beat of Resistance, Crash Through, Finishing Blow, 
Dowsing, Torrentodon, and Goblin Wizardry. All right, so those are the cards we got. We'll kind of pile all of these together. <laughs> And it's kind of shiny on that side. All right, so. What we do is we kind of sort. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually move this over here. A little bit better, not in the light so bright. Is we sort the cards. So I take the card, this is not needed. This is a land, a land over here. That's a beautiful land too, I love that one. All right, so then we have black. We have green. We have black, we have red, that's backwards. We have white, white. The way where do I want to put it? Put it up there. Maybe over. It's shining. It's sparkly. Reflective. It's too bright. It's too hot on the camera. Okay. I'll just shove it up there. We'll just put it right there. You can see them. Okay. So then we'll do black. We'll do green. We'll do red. Blue, there we go. White. Red. And for those of you who don't know, land, the way that I'm sorting these, if you look at the back of a Magic the Gathering card, white, blue, black, white, blue, black, red, green, red, green. This is like an old school way for like sorting them in the colors, white, blue, black, red, green. And one of the things that you may not know about this little star on the back for the colors, because I'll actually put them like this. I want to explain this to you, because some of you may not know this. All right. So white, blue, black, red, green, right? White, blue, black, red, green, which is the color order, okay? Got it? All right, so when Magic the Gathering was invented, it was invented by a mathematician who decided that for each color combination, that color combination will have two enemies, right? Makes sense? So when you look at the way this little star figure is done, you can do the co color combinations where the color combinations are across from each other, or you do the color combination that were next to each other. Used to be way back when, when it first came out, the color combinations that were side by side as far as blue, black, black, red, red, green, white, blue, green, white, were the best color combinations. But as magic has progressed, better and different color combinations have arised that work well together. And some of the spells that are considered blue spells, they've made white cards that do the same thing as blue and black and so on and so forth. And you can kind of mix and match them. But way back when, it, the best two is like white, white and blue, Azura, you know, black and red, so on and so forth. If you play mono green as an example, let's just say you play mono green as an example, your two enemies are the cards that are mostly geared toward, if you have a green card, blah, blah, destroy green card, blah, blah, green card, green card, blah, blah. The two major enemies back in the day used to be black and blue across from green as far as the enemy. So these two cards were the enemies of green. Black, white, and green were enemies for the black. Red, blue, and white are the major cards that cause trouble for red. White, black, and red cause the major trouble for white. And that's basically how that works. That's why that little symbol is there that way, because it kind of tells you. It's a secret, don't tell anybody. These are your enemies. And that's kind of how it works. If you play blue, green, red are your enemies. The most 
spells that red plays damage blue green damages blue blue green so on those are your enemies that's the way it works so for each one single mono color combination you have two enemies that are your major enemy that you have to deal with now can white and blue fight each other yes of course they can but there's a lot of blue stuff and white stuff that work well together as opposed to blue and red are opposing sides it's just kind of the way that magic the gathering functions is it good is it bad i can't tell you has it changed over time a little bit but it still remains to be true for the most part for spells and the way that the spells are worded so just keep that in mind all right we have a white red white red card that's a multicolor and it is legendary we might use her as the planeswalker not sure yet but that is a legendary card so i'm going to actually put her over here legendary card in that pile blue and i'll actually look through this is a multicolored card i'll stack that on top of that white black black white white green red red green red blue cat token insect token dual colored land green artifact white color blue fact multicolor multicolor green black green blue white red we have red artifact multicolor Red, 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 black, artifact, blue, black, green, white, artifact, red, artifact, blue, red, white, blue, artifact, treasure, token, spirit, token, azurus, land. We have white, blue, white, blue. We have an azurus multicolored card green another azurus red color white multicolor black green blue white blue goblin token land we have a black foil green red blue red red blue black green black green black blue and you see i'm just kind of sorting by color you can only see the top of my head and my scar i apologize trying to sort quickly as possible on an adventure and garrick multicolor Put it in the right pile green, red, blue, blue, red, white. I go in the green pile. Green. Marauder's axe. Scheming symmetry. Oh my goodness, I gotta talk about this card. Scheming Symmetry, one of my favorite cards. Scheming Symmetry is a search card. You and your opponent both search for a card, put it on the top of your library. As long as your opponent is not playing Mill, it's really great. If you're playing Mill, you can use it against your opponent to put the card on top of their library. They pick a good one, then you Mill them. Or you can use this to find something good if you're playing like Black Green or like Black uh, Blue, anything, anything with Black. You can get something, it's kind of cool because if you look at the faces, it's this way or this way yeah isn't that a cool picture i want to get that as an art on the wall really big behind me maybe i'll get frankie to paint it on the wall for me what do you think can you paint that on the wall she doesn't know that she's that good we'll see we'll have her paint it on the wall and i'll let you know but anyway this card is really great like i love this card like to have one of those and open it in a pack Is it as good as a tutor? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. 
Let's just get into cheap. Black, red, blue, white, black, green, multicolor, artifact, blue. Liliana, that is a good card. Like, I just love M21. I can't say enough stuff about M21. Zomba. Stop lying. What's up? All right, multicolor, planes. Hey, yeah. Multicolor, red, celebrant, green, white, black, green, black, green, blue, red, blue. And I would love to see sealed commander tournaments. Could you imagine if you had these packs? Right? Plus, like, you know, Chaldean. And you made, you know, 11, 12 packs. And you made a sealed 100 card Commander EDH. And for those of you who don't know what EDH means, originally Commander was called Highlander. That's why they call it EDH. Um, there's also another format that some of you may not have played called, um, what's that one? Emperor. That's the word I was looking for. Emperor. And Emperor was played where you had one person in the middle that was the king and two knights on each side. And the three versus three, six format, three versus three, kind of like two headed dragon, but one king. And the two knights on the side could not affect the king until one of the two knights was dead. But global effects affected everybody. So I used to play stasis and sit on the left hand side and then I would stasis and boomerang and nobody could cast anything until it was the people on my side turn and they made a house rule saying whenever we play emperor or commander or which was called highlander back then punisher is not allowed to play stasis in the house rule anywhere I went they're like no stasis because I would mean I play stasis so stasis basically locked everybody's board state. They couldn't do anything. But I love playing stasis. So. One of my favorite cards. I'm going to get a t-shirt with stasis on it. And I'll probably give them away on stream when I do. And also I'm going to get this symbol here. This one. As a Punisher symbol with some shirts and some logos. And probably give them away on stream too. Maybe some play mats. Mouse pads, coffee cups, who knows? All right, so what we're doing is we're looking for legendary now. Legendary, 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 legendary. All right. Check these artifacts. Yeah, I can't run a hundred card artifact. Legendary. Yeah, run this as your commander, 100 card artifact deck. Yeah, yeah. That's not possible with what's here, so we can kind of take that out. Land, doesn't count. Mono green, of course, won't um, because I can't run 100 card mono green. Black, mono black, no such luck. All right, so we have the option of white and red. We have the option of white and blue. We have the option of black and green. And we have the option of white and black for our options for commanders. Okay, so the commander deck that we have, it'll be two colors. We'll have to do two colors. Ultimatum won't work. Um, some of these other multicolor cards will. And I could go monocolor with the legendary, but we're gonna, we're gonna have to run two colors to try to make it a hundred card deck. Otherwise it's not viable to buy it within this many packs, $40 worth of cards, $50 worth of cards, depending on where you buy it from. Seven, three, 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 and so 10, 20, 30, $40. But we'll have to decide which one of these would be the best commander. <sighs> da, 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 
white and red. Warrior or equipment? And damage target should fight. Um, equipment you control. Got warden. Whenever a sky warden attacks, attacking creature, flying it. Blocking. Eric the Curse Huntsman. Okay. I am leaning toward Garrick. Nine is good. She's a good card. Um, Peggy Sky Warden, good card. Kaya. But I'm leaning toward Garrick. I think Garrick would probably be the best fit for what we're doing. So let's see here. We have black, green, black, green, black. Black, black, green, black, green, blue. We don't have a commander that has blue in it. All right. So then we have green. We have black. We are going to pull out the red. We're going to set the token on the side. We do not need these two lands. If we were playing Azuris, which is the other option we could go with, as an example, let's just say. And I might be able to actually make two functioning commander decks out of that. It'd be that for sure. So the Azuris might actually work as well. And I'll kind of leave that as an option. Uh, this one is white and red. These would go together and the white and black. The cool celebrant white and black. Not that is not that is not Azurus. Azurus. That is not that is not Azurus and everything else. Okay. So Azuras, white and black, white and black, we'd have those. Red and white, we'd have those. And then white and blue, we'd have those. So like, this is a possibility for a commander deck. Let's just say. Um, this. Wow, there's a lot of red mixed with the white. would be another option for a commander deck. So we could go three different ways. With what we've opened, we could literally build three different commander decks. We could build a white and blue commander deck. We could build a red and white commander deck, which is kind of either or because of white and both. Or we could build a black and green commander deck. We also have black and white cards. And then we have some other cards that are not legendary that are extras that will not fit and function. But it'd be kind of hard to run a commander deck with just Kaya, in my opinion. Garrick, I think, is the most powerful of all of the cards that I pulled as a legendary. So I'm gonna try to make this one function as a commander deck. I am going to count these cards out. Here, three, four, fifty four. Ninety. All right. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven cards. Okay. We can make it function. Would it be a little rough? Yes. Um 
Some of these won't work with that. Because fire diamond creates red. I mean, we could use this in the deck, but like red mana. Like, why would you want red mana? Um, it is a mana ramp card, though. It would fit. Copy that ability. Rings of Bright Hearts are great. Lock it. White and green. Then you control have to add one mana of any color. All right. So these one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine so we could run it a little little land heavy from what i would normally use which is not a bad thing because you can draw more land normally i would use 36 land give or take but it depends on the deck and some of these are actually pretty mana heavy because if you look at this one as an example that's five uh, if you look at garrick which is our commander um, garrick is going to be six and then every time you have to recast Garrick, it's going to be two more. So yes, it would be good to run that additional land. Let's see about the artifacts here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. As an example, we're going to take a look at the white and red. I want to take a look at that and I'm going to count these out real quick as another option. Because I want to show you if you can actually build multiple commander decks or variants of commander decks with $40, 40 to $50 worth of cards. It'd be important to know that, right? Especially if you spend $40, 50 of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, Yeah, so if I went red and white as an example and I threw these artifacts in, I could pull two cards out, four cards out, and make a commander deck as an example with the red and white. Um, if I had a few more packs that I purchased, I could do that and that as an example, or I could actually go land heavy if I wanted to with both of them and actually create and pull half of the artifacts that work well with red and white, half the artifacts that work well with the black and green. And build two different commander decks with it. I also have the white and blue as another option that I could combine the white and blue together to build a commander deck here. I can actually do these and these if I wanted to. So, Kind of crazy how that works. There's enough cards here for technically three different types of commander decks if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna look at these really hard. Yeah, and I would, it would have to be really equipment heavy for her, and I don't think that's very viable. What I'm trying to do. So I'm going to. Put out the rares and uncommons. Okay. 
coming, coming, coming. Coming, coming, coming. Coming, coming, rare. It's coming. Garrick. Garrick the Viking. Garrick the Viking? Right. That gets a sigh every time. You know, they did a movie about him, Garrick the Viking. Starring Will Wheaton. Not both, not both. She loves it when I say that, though. Because we are going for power. So we are using Garrick. Coming, coming, coming. Come Things are brighter. Just so powerful. All right. Now, the other thing that we're checking when I'm looking through these is I'm double checking to make sure, and you can actually lay them out as a match game. I'm checking Whisper Squad. You know, is it good? Is it great? In a commander format for Whisper Squad, you're not going to use the search ability. So you're only getting one one for one if I include it in my commander deck. Because, you know, it's commander has a single cards, so Whisper Squad, it only works as a one one creature. I can't really search for another Whisper Squad because there's not going to be another Whisper Squad in the deck. It's singleton. Memory leak. But I'm making sure that none of these are duplicate. I can lay them all out. And I can double check and play the match game. But I'll do it, I'll do it in reversal. We'll do it in reversal. I'm gonna take these. And the commons there. And then my uncommon pile. And my uncommon pile. So of my rares, I already know. These are my three black rares. There's no duplication as far as Singleton. We don't have a problem. Garrick, Chromatic, and that. So there's no duplication for my rares. These are rares that I'm going to end up using in my deck. Those are fun. For Synergy, Lifelink, blah, 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 Lamia, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Lumlia is lifelink, and it has, um, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. Good for drudge. All right, so these two will work in combination with each other because I can put a card in my graveyard and then I can use Liliana to get her back out of the graveyard. So that's okay. Symmetry allows me to put a card on top of my library. That's great. Whenever your opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that is an amen ability, you may draw a card. Good. Create uh, Wolves. Lands you control have any color. And then Rings of Bright Hearth duplicates the effects of which all of those will work really well together. Lamlia, Liliana, Symmetry, Runic, Rings of Bright Hearth, Gears of Cursed, and Chromatic Lantern. Those will work well together. So that's fine. This card, not so much. All right, so then we take a look at the uncommons. I'll actually slide this down here. So. Of the screen. Put it over here. Those are my rares. Rares. Right. We got chromatic replicator. Fire. Okay. 
return a card from graveyard to my hand. That's always good. That's fine. This one is destroy target creature, opponent control two or less. Target opponent reveal the hand, choose an online card or exile, or excuse me, discard, and then exile target opponent's graveyard. That's a good card. That's fine. No duplication. Can't creature get two, two minutes. Fire Wrangler is Battlefield Target Flying Control gets two zero until end of turn. We're gonna set that aside in case there's anything with flyer we no check. In the battlefield, if you control two or more non-land non-token permanents with the same name as one another, create a 4-4 colorless construct artifact. That's no good. And we'll have to see flashlight. Okay, so that is four more flaps. Uh, we'll start Monarch. And a cloak. Yes, the dummy. Favorite Choose a color before the game begins from not appropriate and you chose a color. Hmm, that's interesting. This is a good card. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily needed for what we're doing. Because we're not making Prismatic Piper the commander. These work. I'm not too keen on the monarch. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's kind of expensive. But. And then fly. All right. So then the next thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to put this one aside also. Allowed. Let me let me take a look on the check something. What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Ooh, ooh. Can we switch up all the rules and imagine a utopia? Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They can weigh me down. Commander, the combination there because they've been all four minutes working. Apparently, that is not banned in Commander. If our card would be conspiracy type conspiracy. Conspiracy. That is a conspiracy card, but it's reprinted in Legends, which is those are. Uh, secret summoning, power play, secrets. Things. No, those are conspiracy conspiracies. 
and then anti cards. Okay, so this one actually can be used to Monarch. Double checking, just making sure. We're not too keen on Monarch cards, but you draw an extra card at the end of your turn, so there's nothing bad about that. All right, we're going to take the black cards. And we are going to put them out. And none of these are duplicate. Right. We're going to take a look at these cards individually to see if they synergize with the deck. So, sorcery card opponent reveals hand. Yeah, that's it. Sacrifice creature playing the you gain one life draw card. Life link. Yeah. For the game life, each opponent leaves one life. That's yeah, Destroy target creature can't work and that's fine. Flying chase over haste. Flying that will work with that. So this can go in there. Uh empty bitch food. Take press food turret player loses. That's fine. Um can you just serve dodge creature? Check battlefield, turn creature check creature. You gain three life. Third point sacrifice this creature if you control creature with oh, can't wait. How many we have? That are four or four. Four, four. Um, and then the counters to add to it, that's okay. When Elvish Doomsayer dies each opponent, discard card. That's fine. Shade. Kicker, return target creature cards from your hand. It spells kick, return two target creature cards from your hand. That's fine. Under Constrictor, in the battlefield, will two counters on it. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter has minutes. That first creature you control is probably one lot to get. Able to can't be blocked by enchant creature or enchantment creature. Okay. Alright, so then we have the green stuff. Everybody likes the green stuff. We are going to double check to make sure there is no duplication. Monks, the green. Because Commander is Singleton. And that's one of the reasons why we use multiple packs. You're wondering why multiple packs were used as far as Commander Legend Pack, Zendikar Rising Pack, The Rest Beyond Death Pack, Ikora Pack, Core 2021 War of the Spark, Core 2020 Throne of Eldraine, Core 2019 Ravnica Allegiance, and Ravnica Guilds of Ravnica is because the number of duplications are extremely low, if impossible, to get amongst multiple sets. You open two packs of the same type of set, you get duplication. A little bit harder to create a commander deck with multiple commons that are duplicate. You have to pull one of those out. All right, no duplication. And I'm gonna check the uncommons as well. No duplication. All right, Hydra's Growth. Battlefield, put one one counter, you know, you're up to double the number of one one counters on end on enchanted creature. The top of the card you library, you may reveal any number of creature for the moment, put it in your hand. Fine. Put a one one counter on our control, proof till end of turn. Fine. Helpful turret player shuffles the number of cards from their graveyard and the library, which is also amazing. Spirit, three one one counters on a two target and double the number of one one counters on each of those creatures, which is great. All right, so then we have Pax Fervor. Three three till end of turn. Any of the battlefield you gain three life, it's a five four. The touch one one, it's a great card. This card is also used in the Fen deck. 
just so you know really good for the fin deck you're making a fin deck as far as a 60 card deck but it is an all-around good death touch one one creature for use for multiple things training into the battlefield draw a card and enchant a creature as long as you temple and then reach constellation whenever enchantment creature into the battlefield under your control you gain two life that's good let's take a look at these this creature enough to destroy it. Wow. Hmm. Well, you'll die early and often. You only shrink, put a 1 1 counter on a creature you control on top of it. Put a creature you control on top of it. Trample till end of turn. That's a bit fun. Vigilance. And actually, you know what? Interesting. I'll kind of keep that side. That's an iffy. It's an iffy, maybe. Travel, convoke. We have a giant spider which has reach and a block flyers. We have. I don't know how many creatures you control the fighting under. Uh, three green men will spend two casts of power. Creature you control gain an indestructible turn to turn gain. So, you'll find them until you turn to creature flying. Create a food token. If it's not effective, it's like nothing. Uh, I scratch the game reveal, help card your library, increase your land card, draw a card. Alright, so enter the battlefield as a creature you control, gain travel until end of turn. That's a good card. We have put a 1 1 counter on target creature, then proliferate. Counter of any kind already there. A lot of counters. Ferocious Pup. Good with woobies. Look at the top card of your library if it's a creature card playing book. Reveal it and put the card into your hand. Don't. Didn't I read that already? Where did I see that? I saw one that did the same thing, right? Oh, this one. Those two do the same thing. Kind of nice. Creature though. Just making sure it wasn't duplicate. I'm not crazy, it's not duplicate. Or I am crazy and it's still not duplicate. Your choice. Alright, Defender, as long as you control a creature with power for right? You're guessing can didn't have Defender. And then the Ferredid is Ferredid. And this one's okay. And that one's okay. These no. Uh come over Gator. Yeah, Whisper Squad, I'm not going to use. Because you need more Whisper Squad. Chrome Replicator, I'm not going to use. And then the Prismatic Piper, I am not going to use. And then this one is okay. It does have any amount of damage dealt to it. Is enough to destroy it. But that's fine. It has Death Touch. It's a Death Touch blocker. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably rate it about a 2. We'll take this forest and this forest and this forest and this swampy swampy. And then we have tokens, 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 tokens. And I don't really need any of these tokens. No sapperling, no insect or treasure token. I don't need those. All right, so. I used all of the artifacts that were usable in this. So if I were to make, as, as an example, a red white commander deck, with the red and white that I have. I would either need to take the artifacts out of here and add it to the red white to supplement it, or I would need to run it without artifacts, which is kind of simple. But it is available if I decide to change my mind later on down the road. After buying 40 to $50 worth of cards, I could run either one of those as commander decks. Am I gonna go through the red and white and separate what I need or what I would use or whatever? No, I can do that for another stream. But these are good to go. Um, I am going to take 
these and set them aside as far as the land. And I'm going to count these. One. So there are 60 cards here, 60, 60 cards. So what we have is we'll have 40 land in the commander deck, which is not bad. It's not bad. You can go as high as I would say 42. You can go as high as 42 land in a commander deck, um, which is mana heavy. Um, it's not bad. Um, 33 is the lowest that you can go. And you kind of want to fall somewhere in between. I would say about 40, 36 to 42 is probably about where you want to be. So 40 cards is not bad for a commander deck. We have 60 and 40, which is good. It's a good even number of spells and land. So this is a balanced, pretty balanced commander deck as far as commander decks go. I don't need these. I'm going to set those aside. Those are my tokens. And then I'm gonna pull out the land that I need for this deck. And then I will go over the cards in the deck. And I, I'm going to explain to you how to mana ratio. You'll need land cards to create the commander deck aside from this. You can either buy a land box. If you buy these, these packs for $40, let's just say, buy these individual packs for $40. From TCG, you buy them from Amazon, you can buy them from, um, eBay, you can buy them from the card shop, you can buy them from Walmart, buy them from a bunch of different places, buy them from, you know, any, any card shop, comic book store. Um, you will need land. Most of the time, people will give you land at a card shop, uh, especially if you're doing draft or buying in for draft. Or you can ask, hey, can I buy X amount of land from a card shop? They'll typically sell you land pretty cheap. Or you can buy a box. They have boxes of land, land boxes. Uh, I think it's like 20 bucks for like 400 land. Maybe a little more, maybe it's 100 of each land. It might be 500 for the land box, I'm not sure. But you can get those from like Amazon. Let me take a look. Seventeen eighty nine, 400 land. It is called a Magic the Gathering Core Set Land Station. 400 cards for $17.89. You can also buy 500 for $22.99 uh, if you want basic lands. They also have a different type of land station, 80 of each mint new $21.95 for land station. I wonder what the difference is as far as those two, because they look like they're a completely different box. One has a planeswalker symbol and it's sideways. The other one looks a little different. Um, 300 assorted Magic the Gathering basic land, 1899. Yeah, you probably get a lot cheaper at a card shop. But it is available if you need lands. Uh, a lot of people, especially when they buy the box, which is this box that I did an opening and stream for before, um, Star City Games Thousand Card Gold Collection that I like. But my 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 stuff is a little different. Like there was duplication in here, just FYI. There was duplication in here. But there's two of us, me and Frecky. So if I get eight of a eight of one common, it's not a bad thing. It's the nine and ten that's one or two too much because they're two of us. So if you and a buddy are buying these and you split it up between you to build a bunch of decks and buy a land station, it, I I do say it's a great purchase. If it's one person buying, just know that there will be multiple duplication above and beyond the four. It would be more than four of each card in particular cards. All right, so we have 60 and 40. How do I mana ratio? I will take the artifacts out. Because artifact can be any color. 
or colorless. And I have seven artifacts. All right. And I have two. That's a multicolor. Green, black, 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 multicolor, black. Alright, so 60 40, we are at a good mana ratio. These are multicolor, these are artifacts. When I ratio a deck for mana ratio, the amount of cards that I want to put in there as far as land, is this is how I do it, okay? You can do it a different way. You could do it, you know, one for one for two. You can do it where you do 33%. You can do it a bunch of different ways. But I wanna show you how I mana ratio a deck that I do, any deck that I do, how I figure out the mana ratio and then how I reduce down if needed for that deck. What I do is I'll put two cards in a pile and I match it for land, one not needed, right? So I would add two land right now if I had three cards that were blocked. I go two, one, 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 one. And then it would be two one. Right? Okay. But I all end up having lands for these with these anyway, so it's not. Alright. So then I count these. This pile. These are the two plus one extra. And these are the one pile. This is separate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I need bare minimum 17 ways to draw black mana. Right? You get it? Okay. And these are extra. So 17 ways to draw black mana. We have one one. So I need 16 more one. Unless I had dual lands for whatever reason which I did not draw any in the pack and I'm not going to add anything extra to the packs that weren't already in there. I'm going to move my core 2021 boxes out of the way. Over here. Somehow, maybe. And then I'm going to open up the land box. You can't see it, it's sitting on the couch next to me. And then I'm going to pull out some swaps. Now, I'm going to double check. I said 17, correct? But I'm going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen ways to draw black mana. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17 black mana. Double check. One. One. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen black mana. And one of which is my pretty little full page. I love these. If anybody wants to send me those, feel free to send me those in my favorite card. All right, for obvious reasons. Okay, so artifacts can kind of go aside. We have the multicolor set aside. I'm gonna slide these up, 17. We have the one pile and the two pile. Slide those up. We go two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. 
two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen green. We have one, two, three. We need 15 forest. Some forest. Order. Right. And in case you're wondering how many land I have, this is the land box. I have plenty of land. I'll have land for days. Three, four, five, six. Actually, we need 15. So I'm going to count one, two. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And they're not particular, they're not in any particular order. It's just land that of a whatever set. It's not a particular set or whatever. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. 18. All right. So we're going to be short on our 100 cards, but we want to make sure we have at least that much mana in the deck. Okay. So the other thing that you can do, because I know I'm short for the amount of cards that I have in the deck, because I need 40 land, right? 40 land. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 9, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35, 5 short. So these are the extra cards that are not of a color, right? So if you do these as far as your mana ratio, and you do it evenly, because these are colors, right? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. See how that works? That's exactly what I'm missing in land, five. Right? So these are even, so you can divide them up, and these are even, so you can divide them. One, two, three, four, five. Now, these, I would do one of each. So I'm gonna do one black and one green, because the color doesn't matter. Right, that covers this, that covers that. And then these individually, one, two, three, four, five. So I have more green than I do black. So what I would do is I would do black, green, green. black green, green two one two being the land but these are kind of separate because it's extra those are my five extra land so i ended up with three forests because my forest amount is higher and two swamps and i'm actually going to pull this one out and swap Oh, M10? It's old! Why? Okay. Wow, I got a lot of those. It's old! Time spiral. Yeah, no, we'll leave it in there. Alright, so then, because it doesn't really matter. M10. Okay, M21. And then I double count the land, double, triple, quadruple count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, 
22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40 for our special event. So we have 40 cards that are land and 60 cards that are for our commander deck. With our commander being Garrick, the pretty, shiny, wonderful Garrick. And that's what we ended up with. So, 40 lands and 60 cards. Common, common, rare. Common, rare. Common, common. Common, common, common. Common, common. Uncommon. Uncommon. Uncommon, common, common, common. Rare. Uncommon. Common, 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 common. Rare. Rare. Common. Uncommon, common, common. Common, common, common. All right. So we have 60 land. 60 land. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 swamps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 forests. 21 forests, 19 swamps. So there's one forest more than there are swamps. A total of 40, 40 land cards. 40 land cards. For the rares that we have, we have Garrick the Cursed Huntsman as the commander for the deck. We have Gravebreaker Lamia as a rare. Gaming Symmetry. Liliana Waker of the Dead. Runic Armasaur. And Chromatic Lantern. Those are our rares in the deck. For our uncommons in the deck, we have Spire Mangler, we have Bowel of Torment, we have Bionic Upgrade, we have Lead the Stampede, we have Hydra's Growth, we have Bark Hide Troll, Looming Shaman, we have Golgari Find Broker, those are the uncommons in the deck. For the commons, we have Temple Thief. We have a Lamphead of Death's Vigil. We have Blood Beckoning. We have Wild Shade. Undercity's Embrace. Leech's Crest, Foily Foily. Strangling Spores. Unholy Indenture. Tempting Witch. Shriek Diver, Epicure of Blood, Blood Glutton, Memory Leak, Elspeth's Nightmare, Hydra Constrictor, Elvish Doomsayer, Infernal Scarring, Doomed Descender, Descender, Finishing Blow, Spark Reaper, Dousing Tyrannodon, Ferocious, Ferocious Pup, Fell the Pheasant, Siege Worm, Stony Strength, Tajuru Blade, Blight, Blight Blade, Wow, that's a mouthful, Pack of Fervor, Foily Foily, 
Turn Timber Aesthetic. Desian Training Nexus Wardens. Wild Heart Invoker. Weary Adept. Giant Spider. Out Muscle. Thundering Keraton. Courage in Crisis. Track Down. Vivian's Grizzly. Ferreted. Dagger Back Bastilus. Stunch Throne Guard. Jousting Dummy. Sleeper Dart. Marauder's Axe. And Haunted Cloak. Those are cards that we have in the commander deck. Now, this is based on opening one of each of these packs. Commander Legend, Zendikar Rising, Theros Beyond Death, Ikora Lara Bohemus, 4 2021, War of the Spark, Corset 2020, Throne of Eldraine, Core 2019, Guilds of Ravnica, and Ravnica Allegiance. And I built a 100 card commander deck with 40 land cards and then 60 regular cards out of the packs that I had. The land were extra, it didn't come with land in these packs, just FYI. You spend 40 to $50 for these packs to build a commander deck as a beginner, 40 to $50, and you end up with a deck that's a commander deck. In this case, a really powerful Garrick Cursed Huntsman commander deck. Now, I was gonna build two, I'm gonna build one tonight, which I already did, that's this one and I'm gonna build one tomorrow. It was actually gonna be Frecky who built one tomorrow, but she likes Garrett Curse Huntsman so much, I'm gonna actually call this her deck. So tomorrow at 11 p.m. Pacific time, till whenever it takes, however long it takes for me to build a deck, I'm going to build a second commander deck, and it'll probably be the deck for myself with these cards here, which is Ravnica Legion, Guild of Ravnica 4 2019, Throne of Eldraine, Core 2020 War of the Spark, Core 2021 Icora Lara Bohemus, Theros Beyond Death, Zendikar Rising, and a Commander Legends pack. And then on Sunday, because technically it's Saturday now, but Saturday 11 p.m. I'm gonna build one Pacific time from Saturday to Sunday morning for myself. And then Sunday night, 11 p.m. till Monday morning, however long it takes, me and Frecky are planning on, as long as she feels up to it, playing the two commander decks against each other. Throughout the week, we will also test the commander decks against some 2019 commander decks that come in a box that are pre-constructed around $35, give or take-ish, um, 30, 39, whatever it is that they are for the 2019 commander decks, like a hundred and twenty dollars for the box set of four and we'll kind of play them against each other and kind of see how they do viable um the garrett curse huntsman deck that i had built here is pretty good i mean think about it for a beginner you spend forty dollars and you end up building a garrett curse huntsman deck um and maybe a little bit extra i don't know 10 bucks extra for land so 40 50 bucks 50 bucks for card maybe 60 dollars total for 60 cards for a 100 card deck um, it's pretty good for a commander deck. So this is the commander deck that I'm going to be playing, or actually Frecky is going to be playing on Sunday. And then tomorrow I will build another one. There's also a lot of white cards in here and red cards in here. And I could have actually used uh, Nahari Heir of the Ancients to build a commander deck. So I mean, this right here is almost a red and white commander deck by itself extra and then there are a bunch of extra cards in here so if you decided to go with one particular color as a new player to buy all of these cards um, to build you can end up almost with two commander decks total out of the cards that you bought or all of these if you decide you don't want them in your commander deck you can end up trading to somebody else as a beginner and trade for better cards for your own commander deck Now, that is pretty much it for the stream. Um, I just wanted to do a beginner setup for building a commander deck and kind of explain to you how to do the mana ratio, how I pick the cards that I pick, what cards are in there. Um, I pretty much used every card that was in there with the exception of like three or four of a particular color that would not work, would not synergize, would not work with the deck. 60-40 is what we ended up with for the commander deck. Tomorrow night, I am going to build another one or Frecky and I are going to build another deck. 
depending on how she feels. If not, I'll build the deck myself with those packs. And then Sunday, if she feels up to it, we will be playing the two commander decks against each other live on stream. Um, I thank everybody for coming into my stream, watching the stream, all of the people from the Etherhub team, Ether website, uh, etherhub.com location that are watching, as well as all of the people that are on Twitch watching that either saw my Facebook post or my Twitter post on the stream that I am doing tonight. And tomorrow I will be doing the same thing, building a commander deck again, and I will go over it with you and explain it to you every step of the way. And we will be doing the pack openings. Again, if anybody subs or gifts subs to my channel, with the exception of Commander Legends, that doesn't count. It's actually a $7 pack. I will open any of these packs, whichever one they pick, and they have the opportunity to guess the rare or mythic in the pack. If they guess the rare or mythic correctly, which is typically a rare or mythic that the person is looking for that's outrageously expensive, hard to find. If it is in the pack when they sub or gift sub to me because they are giving to my channel, if they guess the rare or mythic, I will send them the rare or mythic, which is a little something something that I will give back for supporting my channel. Um, I'm running that all the way through March. I did it in February. It was very good. A lot of people liked it. They liked the pack openings. And it happens whether I am playing Magic the Gathering Arena or whether I'm doing tabletop stuff for Magic the Gathering. So thank you again for watching my stream. Hope to see a lot of you again tomorrow for another Commander deck build. For those of you who want to learn how to build and play and do Commander, it's a good way to get into it. And I enjoy showing, teaching. Um, I also have points in my channel. If you ever need coaching, instruction, or help building decks as far as Magic the Gathering Arena or Tabletop, I will be more than happy to help you. And that's pretty much it. That's all I can say for tonight. Um, I'm tired. Um, I have to buy a new pair of glasses or fix my glasses because I broke my glasses in half. Yes, I did. And um, I'll just be wearing contacts from now on till the end of time. So, thank you so much for watching. Again, I apologize for the camera angle too close. You know, all you really do is see the scar on my face. Um, but, you know, maybe I can adjust the camera angle next time so when I'm leaning over the table, you can see me a little better. Who knows? I will see you tomorrow. Thank you again so much for watching. Catch you on the flip side.